Ladies and gentlemen, let's return into the comp video. We're going to be discussing Intel Skylake. Now that reviews are out and people are seeing them, there's a lot of disappointment in the air, not least of all from me. As many of you know, I was covering the processor and kind of nervous about it, to be totally honest. I mentioned that a couple of times because there were some leaks way before launch that signaled that the IPC gains were not massive. And I was actually going to be working with a motherboard manufacturer or two, and I basically was going to just about to pre-order the chips when another slew of uh, results were leaked, and I kind of just held off on it. I said, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pre-order it just in case the results are not that great, and then I can reconsider my options. Um, and then, of course, the processor leaks finally happened. Basically, people got hold of it slightly early, and then other websites popped up their reviews and to be totally honest with you Skylake is kind of disappointing um, I'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions on this but first of all is it worth an upgrade at all like for anyone well if you're primarily gaming focused even now I would probably say not to unless you really have to because the prices are just inflated um, unfortunately, there's a lot of retail gouging going on, and I'm seeing the i7, which of course is 6700K, going for like 320 Great British Pounds, which is ludicrous, to be totally honest. Other vendors are doing them slightly cheaper, they are like 270, but even so, they are usually out of stock, and so I'm not really certain what's going on there. The launch day pricing gouging, that's not even launch day, last launch window, I guess you could call it, is just ridiculous and for the performance as well it's just not worth it if you happen to have something along the lines of a sandy bridge an ivy bridge or something comparable anyway i would probably recommend sticking with it the only way i would suggest upgrading is if let's say that your pc's just died or you can get a really good price for your old parts another option of course is let's say that you do a lot of video encoding or let's say you do a lot of cpu intensive tasks so just for the sake of argument 3d modeling however that brings me to another point it's really close to the price of a 5820k now of course single thread performance of the uh skylake is slightly better but it's just i don't know i i can't really I can't really suggest or bring myself to recommend uh, Skylake over, let's say, a Haswell setup. Let's say you've got a 4770K or a 4790 or something along those lines. You're probably going to be good for now, especially when you consider that DDR4 prices are still higher than DDR3. It's kind of just a bit of a, a bit of a weird situation, to be honest with you. And to be totally honest, a lot of people have really criticised Intel for this one. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of comments and I won't, you know, kind of go through all of them. But effectively, they've just, just one user, well, more than one user, have called it Fail Lake. And it's, it's really hard to disagree. As I've said, there are some benefits to the platform, certainly. One of them, of course, quite naturally, is the fact that the platform does have more memory bandwidth. And it does have latest technologies, for example, you know, you've got the latest USB 3 support and all that jazz. And the board, because of the way everything's handled, it's really good for, let's say, if you've got a lot of SSDs or what have you. That's all good and dandy. But for the average user, particularly if you're only going like a single PCIe card, it's probably not going to be that much of a big deal anyway. I feel all of this could have been avoided if Intel had simply made the processor a 6 core and 12 thread for the 6700K or for the 6600K it would just be a 6 core. But it's really hard to argue um, the, you know, from the corner of Skylake when you've got once again the 5820K which has got, you know, yes a lower clock speed but you can still overclock it fairly well, not quite as aggressively as Skylake, I might you know, uh, then again, you know, we don't really have enough retail samples of Skylake at the moment, but just from the initial testing, it looks like Skylake does, of course, overclock slightly better, and you do have slightly higher single thread performance, but even so, with those additional cores and those additional threads, it's really hard to argue from the point of view of um, Skylake, at least in my opinion. And who's to blame? Well... There are some problems, of course, right now that we have. 
with silicon quite simply put it's getting increasingly more difficult to squeeze performance out of silicon but we are getting there but I, I guess really it comes down to competition um, and hopefully and I emphasize the word hopefully Intel will get some competition when Zen launches now I know people are gonna have mixed feelings about this but personally I'm really hoping Zen just kicks Intel's butt at least for six months or so because I think it would be really good for the PC industry I think it would be really good for the tech industry even if you're not a gamer even if you're a console enthusiast I feel it would be good I think it would be good for AMD to be on top at least for the you know short while and I think that it would help kind of shake things up in the you know in the race if you will and Zen does look kind of promising. I've discussed Zen ad nauseum before, so I won't go too much into it. But it's a lot more Intel-like in the way things are happening inside the chip. And basically the way that it handles multi-threading is a lot more Intel-like, I guess you could say. And performance is looking pretty good. Obviously for desktop users, we're not going to get like a 1 billion core processor, which is what we're seeing. I mean, for example, you know, we've heard about the APU from them, which has got like 32, 32 cores, excuse me, with high bandwidth memory too, and blah, 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 blah. That's obviously aimed at servers. But even if the desktop version has like an 8 core processor with DDR4 support and all of the other jazz, I'd be more than happy. I'd be quite, I'd be quite content. Even if Zen is only like 5-10% faster than Intel, it's something. And to be totally honest, even if the processor launches to be the same speed as Intel, and so Intel have to pull something else out, and then AMD are competing on price, and Intel are competing on maybe slightly better performance, or maybe it's kind of a wash, I'm happy with that. Back in the day of the early Athlon, and this is obviously going back some, uh, we're talking like when the Pentium 3 was around and it was competing against the Athlon and uh, even up to Athlon 64 versus Pentium 4s and all of that stuff. AMD were actually really competitive and it was a really good time for the industry because you were of course having the CPU, the clock speed wars, but more than that there was a lot of innovation. Uh, Intel basically had to start utilizing hyper-threading for the Pentium 4s, uh, basically utilizing, of course, the longer pipeline that the P4 had. Um, AMD, of course, were being super aggressive, and that was me accidentally knocking over a jar of money. Sorry about that. Loads of change. So that probably sounded really pleasant in the microphone. You had a whole bunch of innovation back then and it was really good for the industry obviously 64-bit extensions AMD were the first for that at least for consumer level and one could argue that it wasn't really that useful at the time but even so the memory controller of the Athlon 64 and the various other bits and bobs that AMD actually put into that really helped and so I'm hoping that that will, of course, start spurring on. So once again, I won't most likely be personally moving to Skylake simply because I'm not really that big of a fan of it. We've got multiple test systems um, here at RGT. And to be totally honest, right now we're considering moving to the 5820K. Uh, but I guess we'll figure it out. We're just kind of looking at all of our options at the moment, speaking to a couple of motherboard vendors, trying to figure out what the hell we're going to do. But I'm either thinking of switching to, as I said, the 5820K, or possibly moving more towards um, maybe new monitor setups or recording equipment or something like that, because it's, you know, even coming from an older system, let's say one of our systems is a 2500K, and it's just not that much of an IPC gain. It's per, you know, 2500K if you're GPU bound, and let's face it, if you're running a higher resolution, even 980 Ti technically can get bogged down at 1440p. And yeah, if you're gonna play games like, I can't think of an example, I don't know, Counter-Strike Go, then yeah, sure, you know, pretty much anything can run that at 1440p, but if you're gonna be running something like Crisis 3, or the next generation of games which are gonna be coming out, like even Witcher 3, particularly if you've got Hairworks enabled or anything like that, to be honest, you're going to start hitting GPU-bound problems. And there are monitors now, 40K, uh, 40K? That that would be very high resolution. Uh, apparently, I'm recording this in the future. A 4K monitors now, they're becoming quite cheap. You can get good 4K monitors for not, you know, 4, 4 billion pounds, and the prices have come down pretty quick, and I, I have a feeling that that's going to happen over the next year as panels become 
better, we get better contrast, better black and uh, white balance ratios between the screens. You've got, of course, new panel technologies. FreeSync has now become a thing officially, and G-Sync is definitely starting to catch on. You're starting to really get 120 hertz screens, and hopefully that's going to become more of a standard in 4K as well. Me point being, because I'm kind of digressing just a smidgen, I have a feeling that, you know, most people are going to be GPU bound. So, obviously there will be some games which are definitely going to push the CPU to its absolute limit. But, I I would say that if you've got a good Haswell setup, or a good, even a good Sandy Bridge setup, you can get really ridiculously cheap um, Sandys right now. I mean, the 2600K on eBay, just for the sake of example, is like nothing. I saw one because I was actually helping out a viewer just a couple of days ago, and I was checking out prices for him, and it was like... I think a 2600 or I can't remember if it was a 26 or a 2700 I think it was a 26 but don't quote me on that I think it was it was either one of those processors basically it was the one with the hyper thread thing it was and obviously it was a K version and it was like 60 or 70 pounds it was like so cheap and that was a buy now as well so yeah technically I guess maybe the processor had been thrashed to shit but even if it lasts you like two years and it costs you like 70 pounds that's like 35 pounds a year and by which point zen will be out and you know you're probably going to have moved on uh, ddr3 would probably outlive its usefulness by then maybe you could even sell the sticks at a pre pretty good price depending on what happens with ddr3 and becomes a rarity anyway let me know your thoughts on this one as i said i'm not saying don't buy Skylake. I'm saying that it does have its place in the market, particularly if you are focused on, let's say for the sake of argument, gaming only, and you know, you need the latest technology, you need 3.1, you need the extra big PCIe slots, um, I'm sorry, PCIe bandwidth and all that stuff, then yeah, it's it's potentially a good upgrade, or let's say you're even coming from an older system, you, you can get an old, a good price for your old system, then yeah, but if you're on the other hand you're upgrading purely for CPU performance, then personally I would recommend a 5820K unless the prices really come down for Skylake. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit longer than what I wanted. This is kind of a vloggy, updatey, thingy, madoobie. I don't know what it was. It was a thing. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.